morning guys welcome back to the channel it's Friday Friday the 13th and I think today's gonna be a good day we do have a couple of little projects to do on the old Mopar but unfortunately one of them is not the sound deadening product Although the temperatures are supposed to get up into the mid to high 50s today, I still don't believe that that's warm enough, not to mention the fact that it's kind of a crappy day, it's raining. So my hopes on that is to be able to get the car backed out of the garage in the driveway where it can get direct sunlight and uh, during a nice day. and. When that nice day comes, it'll help heat things up, not just the metal on the floor, but it'll also heat up the Dynamat product itself, make it a little more flexible to lay down and stick. So the, the couple of little mods that I have uh, aren't anything too serious. I did manage to finally find a couple of uh, power window switches for the car. The power windows on that car have been something I've struggled with in the 20 plus years I've owned the car in the fact that they intermittently work. I've taken them apart, I've cleaned them, um, I have replaced the switch once before um, but the switch on the passenger side just doesn't work period so I did find a couple of switches just like this one um, for the driver's side and one for the passenger side so the idea there is to switch those out and hopefully just unplug the old ones and plug the new ones in that it will work without any issues. The other one is I had some fancy headlights and now they're not crazy they're not gaudy they're not you know all ricer looking but they are brighter headlights than the standard seal beams that would have come on that car and uh, when I first was having when I was first putting the car together I was having an electrical problem with the car um, in the fact that the headlights would come on, stay on for like a few minutes and all of a sudden the headlights and park lights would simply lose power and uh, after a little bit of uh, messing around with that it ended up being a headlight switch. So I replaced the headlight switch years ago. Um, during the process of trying to eliminate that problem we ended up putting regular headlights back in thinking that the aftermarket style headlight was causing part of that problem so now that we've got the headlight switch replaced we're going to be putting the other headlights back in the car so those are just a couple of things that I wanted to get done on the uh, on the old Mopar this weekend uh, if the weather stays crappy uh, that's what I'll be doing however if the weather does turn around then we'll probably end up doing some uh, yard work and take advantage of this good weather because it's official. We are only 35 days away from the campground opening where we have our trailer and we practically live there until like October. So looking forward to that. So stay tuned to the channel and if there's anything that you see out there that would help improve my car without looking gaudy or redneck or ricer-ish, put them in the comments below and we'll see what you guys have to say and see what kind of uh, upgrades that you'd like to see on my car. One of the other things that I was thinking of was simply uh, a wheel style change. Now what's on there now is just polished aluminum and they are harder than heck to keep clean. Uh, not just from a little bit of brake dust but raw aluminum is a very dirty metal and it doesn't stay uh, polished very long so you got to put a lot of effort into it to get them polished and once they're polished they just simply don't stay polished uh, for very long so the idea is if I go with something that is a chrome finish or a painted finish then the cleanliness and the shine will stay a lot longer so we just arrived here at work so uh, we'll see you in a few minutes in this business, we do have the opportunity to sell our vehicles through an online auction, which kind of happens similar to what eBay does, where guys can go on, other dealers, 
and they can bid on our cars based on the descriptions and the pictures that have been put on there. Now the company that we deal with in this particular case is eBlock and eBlock sent a representative from their company to us and uh, did a condition report on three of my vehicles, three of my older vehicles that I've been sitting on for a while. And so it's basically an unbiased. I don't just take pictures that look good. They take their own. They give a full description of the car. And the buyer, which we are on occasion uh, from them as well, can go on and get an accurate description of the vehicle. So in this particular case, we had a uh, we had our 2015 Kia Rio, as well as the 2013 Dodge Dart. Along with them is the 2015 Hyundai Sonata, which we did sell. It took a lot of negotiation to get there. See, when we sell our vehicles, we don't want to lose money. I mean, we don't mind breaking even and getting our money back so that we can take that money, put it into something else that we'll sell. But in this particular case, I ended up going behind a little bit. But we have been sitting on the car since September, and uh, some people will try and tell you that in the used car business, 90 days is kind of that golden rule. Well, it is if you're borrowing your money to buy your cars, and we pay cash for our cars. So we don't mind sitting on them for a little while longer, as long as we think that we can get them sold. What I'm doing right now is I've taken the plates off of it because it is an out-of-province sale. This one's going to Laval, Quebec, which is a part of Montreal. And so we've got to get the plates surrendered and then get the registration sent off to the auction company so that it can get forwarded to the guys that bought it. So I lost a little bit of money today on this particular deal, but it frees up some money so that I can go buy some more vehicles and maybe something that will turn over a little bit quicker. So we are on our way down to Motor Vehicle to surrender that plate right now, and we'll be back with you in just a sec. Well, the Department of Motor Vehicle never fails. What a great experience that was today. As a rule, they generally are very good people to deal with, especially when they're dealing with the dealers. So, you know, I understand that they have jobs that they have to do and a certain time to get those jobs done. And they can't always do it within the time frame that's allowed. And they still have to look after the people that are there. So, I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm trying to defend them, but I am a little bit. Uh, they are just people, and uh, they have to work within the rules that they have. So it certainly isn't the job that I would want to have, knowing the criticism, knowing the criticism that they take from a lot of people. We were eventually able to make a deal on the 15 Kia Rio, the red car. And so that will be going out as well. Same idea. We were putting it up on the auction block and uh, we managed to uh, get almost exactly what we were asking for it. So we're not losing big time on it. We, uh, I think we're only going behind by about a hundred bucks, but we've been sitting on it for a while. So at the end of the day, it's freeing up money that we can go and buy some other vehicles with. So the 2015 Kia Rio is sold and it is going to Nova Scotia. So just another quick update on this fat cat. It's terminal. We have determined that after a little bit of probing, it seems as though the uh, engine has jumped its timing. The timing chain is, is loose. So maybe the tensioner failed. Um, again, purely coincidence. We really can't blame anybody. It just so happened. But when we had it up to Kia, that, that's when it happened. And uh, so we are going to look at the cost of getting that fixed versus putting another motor in it. So we'll have to make a few phone calls and uh, see what the motor's gonna cost. I do have a few sources um, that we can go and pick up a motor, generally speaking, pretty cheap. And we hope this is one of the ones that is pretty cheap. So. Once again, the Kia saga continues and we will keep you updated on the progress of that. So our lot is getting pretty empty. We freed up some money by selling those two cars on the auction today. So uh, first of the week we can put some of that money to good use, buy a few more vehicles that we think will sell a little bit better or a little bit quicker 
and start filling that lot up again for the spring. So it is Saturday. It's not the sunshiny bright day we thought it was going to be. So instead we're going to tackle a few things. One, we're going to install or get prepared the screen, as you can see, has a great big gaping hole in it to the screen door. We're going to get that taken over to Speedy Glass and have them repair it, put a new screen in it for us. And the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stop off at the lumber yard and pick up a few boards so I can fix my holes and my cracks. Yeah, I did that. And the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to we're going to head back to the shop, and as you can see from the thumbnail, we are going to be putting some uh, springtime wheels on the old shop truck. So we've had these wheels for a little while. You guys have never seen them. So we're going to get them on there. We're going to get the truck all cleaned up, shined up, at least get a layer of muck. Wipe down some of this undercoating that seems to always want to creep out from all the edges. And we'll just give it a bath and make it look a little more presentable. After all, it does have our name on it. and we're ready for an oil change, so let's get started. Nice clean truck, at least for a little while. So there we go, we've got the summer wheels and tires on the vehicle. The truck is all washed up and uh, ready for spring. So now we're just going to go grab some lunch and look after the dogs and then we will hit the lumber store go get a couple pieces of lumber to fix the stairs on the back step and hopefully if we have some time left in the day we will go out to the garage and uh, put those power window switches on the car as well as replace the headlights so that's what we're gonna do well guys we did make it home and uh, we were able to get the steps fixed up at least temporarily once we got in there, we realized that there was more rotten than expected. So we did get some boards down so that we can actually walk on it without falling through. But the rebuild will have to come at a later date. So I am exhausted. It is cold. I am cold. And I just don't have it in me to work on the old car. So guys, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I promise you in the next video, we will get a couple of those projects done on the old car and get you caught up with that. So guys, once again, I really appreciate everything that you do by watching. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button right here. I'll put a list of some more videos for you to watch. Thanks for tuning in and we will see you in the next upload.